Good morning, Blue Jay friends, and thanks for being here. This is Blue Jays vs. Them, and I'm your host, Jerry Schwinnard. I'd like to welcome any first-time listeners. I hope you'll stick around and become a regular listener. For my returning listeners, welcome back. If you are a regular listener, why not become a subscriber at whatever podcast provider you're listening from? Normally, I'd mention the website and ask you to leave your questions and comments there. So, let's get that out of the way. In case you didn't already know, the website is www.bluejaysversusthem.ca That's bluejaysvsthem.ca You can also find my social media links on the website. Here are a few things we'll cover in this week's episode. We'll recap last week's episode. We'll review the Blue Jays' first 10 games to open the season versus the Cardinals, the Royals, and the Angels. We'll talk about the first two games versus Detroit and preview tonight's game. The 50-50 draw prizes for the second homestand. We'll continue our search for our missing home games. Preview the upcoming series versus the Tampa Bay Rays and the Houston Astros. So let's get started. Last week's episode was much closer to what I had originally envisioned. It was also more in line with the shorter time, running at 16 and a half minutes. There was some feedback, and although I gave my sentences more time to breathe, I still need to work on my delivery. Apparently, I'm still talking too quickly. My final score recaps could use some modification, so I'll be trying something new this episode. Looking back at our first three series, the Blue Jays went 6-4. and four. I'm not sure if Buck Martinez of Sportsnet said the last time or the only other time, well, there was only other one time, that the Blue Jays started the season on a 10-game road trip. Before I get into our 10-game road trip to start the season, I want to point something out. The Blue Jays asked for this extended road trip to start the season to make sure that the renovations were in place and would be completed when we came home. In fact, it's probably a safe assumption that We'll start next year on the road as well, although I doubt it'll be another 10-gamer. To start the 1984 season, the Blue Jays went 6-4 on the road, splitting the two games in Seattle, taking two of three from the then California Angels, and splitting another two games in Oakland, and taking the final game in Texas to win the series 2-1. The Jays went 89-74 that season, And for my astute listeners who are quick in math, you picked up on the fact that 89 and 74 add up to be 163. And for my regular listeners, you'll recall that 1984 would be the year we'd pick up on from our search for the missing games. That we'll do a little later on, so let's get back to this season. We stole the home opener from the St. Louis Cardinals in a wild come-from-behind win, 10-9. Then we lost the next two games. We lost the first game to the Royals and then took the next three. We split the first two games versus the Angels and wrapped up the road trip the same way it started, with a wild game, this time winning in extra innings. Well, before we recap the Angels series, let's take a look back at the final game versus the Royals. Kevin Gosman got the start in the final game of the four-game series versus the Royals. In his second start of the season, Gosman was on top of his game. He pitched six complete shutout innings, only allowing four hits and striking out seven. Toronto scored two in the first inning off a one-out single by Vladdy, followed by back-to-back doubles by Varsho and Chapman. Kiermaier would score after hitting a two-out double off a Bichette single in the second inning. Kevin Biggio made it 4-0 on a two-out home run in the fourth, his first of the season. Vladdy got his second home run in as many games in the fifth inning to make it 5-0. The final score, Toronto won 6-3. Toronto had 11 hits, including two home runs. The Royals had three hits with only one home run, taking three of the four games. The Royals will be in Toronto for a three-game weekend series starting September 8th. In Game 1 versus the Angels last Friday, Chris Bassett made a second start as a Blue Jay, and it looked like things were going to go south quickly. Jansen was feeling under the weather, and Kirk, who had only caught Bassett once in spring training, got the start. A time clock violation was issued, as he was having trouble with his pitchcom device. This led to a walk, and then Mike Trout hit a home run to take a 2-0 lead. He settled down somewhat after that, pitching six innings, only giving up an unearned run in the fourth. 
He did give up five walks and struck out five. Toronto's first run came in the fourth. Vladdy and Chapman both singled to start. Kirk drew a one-out walk to load the bases. Santiago Espinal reached on a fielder's choice that scored Vladdy from third. Chapman was then caught stealing home on the play for the third out. Bo Bichette drove in three with his second home run of the season in the seventh inning. The final score, Toronto won 4-3, out hitting the Angels 9-3. The Angels left six runners on base, while the Jays only left five. The Jays also committed three errors, and Romero picked up his fourth save of the season. Jose Barrios got his second start in the middle game of the series, and it did not go well. He pitched four-plus innings, was charged with six runs, four of them earned. He did strike out five and only walked one, though. The Angels led off the fifth with a homer, followed by a throwing error by Barrios and a single. Mike Trout homered off Adam Simber, allowing the two inherited runners to score. A ground-out double play followed by a fly-out ended the fifth inning. Blue Jay pitching gave up another two-run homer in the eighth. In the third inning, Bouchette drove in two runs on his third home run of the season. Chapman got his first of the season after Vladdy reached on a single, giving the Jays a 4-0 lead. A Springer Dinger to lead off the fifth made it 5-3, but that would be all the Jays would score. The final score, Angels won 9-5 to even up the series. Both teams had 10 hits with 3 homers. The Jays left 9 runners on the bases, and the Angels only leaving 3. The Blue Jays committed 2 errors. For the rubber match, Kikuchi got his second start, and it didn't go as well for him as his first. He pitched four and a third, allowing six runs on nine hits, including three homers. He did strike out six batters while only allowing one walk. The Angels took a 6-0 lead until the top of the sixth. Springer led off the inning with a walk, followed by a Bichette single, and Vladdy was hit by a pitch, which loaded the bases. Matt Chapman hit his first career grand slam and his second homer in as many games. Varsho followed that up with a bunt single which knocked the Angel starter Reed Detmers out of the game. Merrifield reached on a fielding error, moving Varsho to second. Biggio hit a sack fly to move Varsho to third. Kevin Kiermaier hit a two-run triple, tying the game at six. Chapman would score Bichette from third, who led off the seventh, being hit by a pitch. The Jays would take a 10-6 lead into the 8th inning until Eric Swanson surrendered a 2-out solo home run before ending the inning with a strikeout. Jordan Romano recorded his first blown save, a 2-out walk to Shohei Otani to load the bases followed by a hit batter forcing in the 8th run. Hunter Renfro tied up the game with a 2-run double. Kiermaier hit a 1-out RBI double in the 10th and would score on a single by Springer to take a 12-10 lead. Mike Trout would force in the Angels' 11th run on a two-out, bases-loaded walk from Trevor Richards. Tim Meza then got Otani to ground out to end the game. The final score, Toronto won 12-11 in 10 innings. Romero got the win, Meza got the save. Both teams had 13 hits. The Angels had four home runs to Toronto's one. Both left eight runners on. The Angels have the only error. Toronto wins the series 2-1 to one and takes a 6-4 and four record heading into their home opener versus the Detroit Tigers. The Angels will be in Toronto for a three-game weekend series starting on July 28th. Our home opening ceremonies included some personal hardware being awarded. Jordan Romano received the Tip O'Neill Award for the top performing Canadian baseball player. Alejandro Kirk received a Silver Slugger Award and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. received his Gold Glove Award. The Vladdy Gold Glove bobbleheads were given to the first 15,000 fans at Wednesday's game. Recent Hall of Fame inductee Fred McGriff threw out the ceremonial first pitch to Vladdy. I didn't catch the name of the performers who sang the national anthems, but wow. If anyone can comment with their name, that would be great. Alec Manoa got the start and had a nice, efficient first inning. And then the second inning happened. It might have been much worse if Kevin Kiermaier hadn't reached over the center field fence to steal a leadoff home run off Kerry Carpenter. Unfortunately, the Tigers still took a three-run lead off a home run by Nick Matten. Mano allowed a single and two more walks to load the bases before getting the final two outs. 
The Jays got one run back off a Alejandro Kirk RBI single to score Varsho from second. The offense came alive in the fourth and the fifth innings. Matt Chapman hit his third homer of the season in the fourth, and Kevin Kiermeyer and Springer led off the fifth with back-to-back jacks to take a 4-3 lead into the bottom of the eighth. Bichette led off the eighth with his fourth home run of the season. Brandon Belt got his third hit of the night and his first RBI, driving in Varsho from third. Yeah, I said third hit of the night. Kirk got into the home run party for a three-run blast for his first of the season. The final score, Blue Jays win 9-3 on 10 hits, including five home runs. Detroit had five hits, including the three RBI home run. Kevin Gosman took the mound on Wednesday and pitched eight complete. He allowed three earned runs, his first earned runs of the season, and allowed five hits, including a solo home run in the fourth, two-run homer in the seventh. Gosman struck out 11 batters without allowing a walk. The Blue Jays scored their first run of the day on a single by Merrifield when Guerrero appeared to be out for the second time trying to score. The third base umpire called runner interference and Guerrero was awarded the run. The Blue Jays tied the game in the bottom of the ninth to send the game into extra innings. Kiermaier dropped a sack punt to move Danny Jensen to third and George Springer hit a walk-off single to end the game. The final score, Blue Jays win 4-3 on 9 hits. Detroit had 6 hits, including 2 home runs. Chris Bassett will make his home debut to close out the series later this evening. The Jays will be going for their first sweep of the season. Amazing April continues. Here are the early bird prizes for the second homestand. April 24th, a $1,000 WestJet vacation gift card. On April 25th, a Blue Jays memorabilia bundle package. April 26th is the Sky Dome Original Stadium seats, although they may have Rogers plaques on them. The picture shows Sky Dome seats. April 28th, Jose Batista signed Bat Flip poster. On April 29th, another $10,000 cash prize. And on April 30th, the April Homestand Jackpot. At the time of this recording, it was valued at $562,215. By the time ticket sales close, this could be well over a million. Ticket sales will close on the 30th at 10 p.m. I will provide a link in the description on my website, or you can go to jayscare.com. The winning number for the grand prize jackpot will be announced noon on Monday, May 1st, on Jay's Care social media channels and at jayscare.com. I'll provide the winning numbers as available for each daily early bird prize in next week's episode. As I mentioned earlier when recapping the first 10-game road trip, the only other time we start the season on a 10-game road trip was in 1984. I want to remind everyone again, the road trip to start this season was at the request of the Toronto Blue Jays to accommodate the renovations. I have no idea why we started 10 games on the road in 1984. I also can't tell you why we played 163 games. I can tell you that we played 81 at Exhibition Stadium and 82 on the road. The following season, we played only 161 games. Undoubtedly a rained out game that couldn't be made up. Whatever the reason, this time things didn't even out as they did in 77 and 78. This time, we still played 81 road games and only 80 games at Exhibition Stadium. We also won our first AL East pennant that season, losing the ALCS to the Kansas City Royals in Game 7 after taking a 3-1 series lead. In 1986, like 1984, in which we played an extra game, for whatever reason, and just like 1984, 81 games were played at Exhibition Stadium, and 82 games were played away. After completing our 10th season in 1986, Toronto had played 1,563 total games. 780 of them were at Exhibition Stadium. 783 of them were played away on the road. Things played pretty evenly over the next seven seasons, 162 games, 81 away and 81 at home. And then 1994 happened. The season was cut short by a labor dispute. I think I'll end our search for the missing home games right here for now. On Friday, the Blue Jays will get their first look at a division rival. The Tampa Bay Rays are currently the AL East division leaders at 12-0. If they manage to sweep the Red Sox, they will come into Toronto with a perfect 13-0 record. The two teams will play a three-game weekend series, and then Toronto will head to Houston to face the Astros for a three-game series starting Monday. If you follow Toronto even remotely, you'll know that this team has had our number since 2008. 
Believe it or not, at the end of the 2007 season, our all-time record against the then Tampa Bay Devil Rays was 92 and 75 with a 551 winning percentage. Since then, it's been a very different story. The Rays, who by the way changed their name for the 2008 season, as the Rays, they have a 163 to 108 record against Toronto. All time at home, we have a 113 to 105 record, but that's largely due to our early success. Since 2017, our record at home has been 24 wins and 27 losses. Last season was a bit of a mess since our season got off to a late start due to the labor dispute, so I'll include 2021 as well. In 2021, we were 4-6 and six at home and 8-11 and 11 overall. Last season, we held our own at home at going 5-5 five and 9-10 five and and on the season. We did win three of the five-game homestand last season, including splitting a doubleheader on September 13th. We also took two of the last four games in Tampa, but I'll talk about that when we go there. We did play them three times during spring training, once in Dunedin, which we won, and twice in the Trop which we lost both. Our projected starters for the series are Jose Barrios, who will make his third start of the season, as will Kikuchi, and Manoa will wrap up the homestand with his fourth start. We would be fortunate to win two out of three, but sorry to disappoint. I'm going to say we lose two of the three, giving the Blue Jays a 4-2 and two homestand and 10-6 and six going into Houston. The reigning World Series champions? Houston has not been kind to the Blue Jays. As a matter of fact, we don't fare very well against them at home or in Houston. Our overall record against Houston is 29 and 36 with a 446 winning percentage. Toronto had played against the Astros twice before they came to the American League in 2013. The Jays were swept in the first three games which were played in Houston in 2005 and in 2011 they took two of the three games in Toronto. Since joining the AL West in 2013, the Astros have won 31 of the 59 games. Toronto has lost 19 of those games in Houston, while only winning 11. Other than last season, the Astros have won two of the three games each season going back to 2017. In 2016, we won three of the four games, and in the first game, we lost 2-1 to one in 14 innings. Last season, we took two of the three games in Houston and four of the six overall. Our projected starting pitchers are Gosman, Bassett, and Barrios. I'd like to say we take two of the three, but I'm sticking with the overall history and projecting a one and two trip to Houston. Oh, overall home and away differential. The Astros have a slight edge of playing 33 games in Houston and only 32 games in Toronto. That should do it for this episode. Join me next week when we look at We'll do a recap of this episode, and we'll look back at the last game in Detroit, which is being played later today, and the first homestand of the season. We'll also look back at the three-game series in Houston, the 50-50 draw winning numbers for the homestand, and we'll continue our journey through the seasons to find out where our missing home games went. We'll preview the series versus the New York Yankees, and our return home to face the Chicago White Sox. Last week, I asked for some constructive criticism. Well, I got some off the record from my family, and I'm very grateful for that. Hopefully, I'll keep improving. It's the audience that I don't know I really want to hear from. I want to make this the best podcast I can make it, and if I don't get critical feedback, I can't make it better. Yes, I'm grateful for the wonderful words of encouragement I get from, well, you know who you are. If there are any podcasters out there listening, especially sports or Blue Jay podcasters, I'd really like to hear from you. If you've enjoyed listening to me and found it interesting, then let me know by reacting on the post I leave on either Facebook or Twitter. Or leave a comment, retweet, and share. I guess if you don't like it, then you probably won't be bothered telling me unless you really hated it. If you got this far and you're still listening, leave a comment with the hashtag KiermeyerRocks. Okay, I've done my closing ramble. Once again, thanks for tuning in. As always, I've been your humble host, Jerry Schwinnard, and you've been listening to Blue Jays vs. Them. Once again, I want to thank you for spending your time with me. Join me next Thursday and every Thursday of the regular season. Until then, take care of yourself and take care of your loved ones. Have a wonderful rest of your day and let's go Blue Jays. Let's go. Bye for now.